Hey guys, so I realized in a lot of my videos I always mention about having proper medical training and um, I thought it would be good to actually make a video about the medical training that I always recommend and so I wanted to talk about uh, the different structures of wilderness medical training you can get. There are a couple different um, classes you can do and they all build on each other and the it starts off in recreational use like uh if you're outside or just recreationally climbing biking hiking skiing whatever uh a small medical class to take in that case uh ver and it keeps on building up to outdoor medical professionals and just the medical professional world so i wanted to make a video detailing each one of those steps and as well as uh sort of give you guys a guide where if you're thinking about doing this particular activity outside having a proper medical basis to work with uh, in case you get into any sort of emergency while you're out there. I am going to be reading off of notes for this because I wanted to give a pretty detailed uh, summary of, uh, of the each medical class you can take and I'm not able to remember it all. I can definitely tell you through my experience that I've taken a number of these medical courses and um, I uh, have been to a number of these different medical providing agencies, but I haven't been to all of them. And so uh, first things first is really, uh, there are a couple different groups you can go to for outdoor medical training. Uh, the big one is NOLS, N-O-L-S, National Outdoor Leadership School. And that uh, that sort of class, it, it sort of provides all the different uh, medical classes I'm going to talk about. And it is a good place to go to. I actually got a certification from NOLS a couple years ago. And uh, I really enjoyed what it had to say. I really enjoyed the class, thought it was a good class. And um, I would definitely recommend... Uh, people to check it out. Uh, another one is RMI, Remote Medical Institute, International, sorry. Uh, I think uh, other people will call it Remote Medical Institute as well. But uh, I also took a class through them uh, just recently, a couple months ago, and I thought that that was also very well done. So uh, I'm not sure how far RMI reaches. Obviously, Knowles is national. You can find them anywhere in the US. But if you do a little bit of research, if you just like go onto Google and type in, you know, wilderness first aid class, you can see what different places will provide that specific class to you in your area. Uh, REI, they have their own, um, like their own, uh, I think they call it an outdoors school, which provides, you know, numerous different uh, educational opportunities to get yourself outside with different skills. Uh, and then they're obviously all over the place. So uh, they often will provide some sort of medical training, whether it's through REI or actually they partner up with Knowles a whole lot to uh, just as a platform. To, so that way Knowles can provide their own uh, education. So uh, REI is not a bad place to go to if you have one in your area, a good resource to at least find some sort of medical training. But really they offer all sorts of stuff. Uh, as well as you can get CPR training, which um, is in some of these medical training, uh, you have CPR, but uh, you can just go to your standard firehouse or again onto Google and find some place that'll provide CPR, adult CPR at least. Uh, and then if you want to add on infant CPR and child CPR, that wouldn't be bad as well. And those classes generally teach, you know, straightforward CPR as well as they'll often uh, teach the Heimlich, Heimlich maneuver for uh, adults and infants as well, uh, depending on the curriculum. So uh, you can do your own research into that, but obviously CPR is not a bad thing to have. Uh, I will say that there are a bit of differences between front country CPR, that being anywhere in an urban environment, and back country CPR, mainly with, uh, with uh, actually when to stop CPR. But uh, I'm not a licensed medical provider, so I'm not going to go into that. Obviously, this doesn't count as any sort of medical training. This is just a video I put on YouTube to help you guys get your own medical training. But uh, but that is a, a big difference that taking a higher level wilderness course will help 
differentiate between uh, being in the back country versus being in the front country. And uh, that'll just be something you have to figure out on your own. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, I guess I'll give a little bit about my personal experience in medical wilderness medicine. Uh, since I'm a guide, I originally took a wilderness first responder course, or woofer for short, and uh, I'll talk about that in detail in a little bit. But uh, I took that two years ago, or maybe a little bit more, maybe it was more like three or something. But I took it a number of years ago. Uh, if you're planning on going through any of the AMGA certifications, rock guide, alpine guide, ski guide, that is a requirement before the or initial course that you have to take, uh, which I'm sure everyone who's researched is aware of. Uh, so you have to be wilderness first responder. And, uh, and I started out with that information. And then I kind of wanted to learn a little bit more from there. So a number of months ago, I took a EMT course. Actually, I took a remote EMT course. It was called remote because it included the uh, MPIC setting, which is medical care person in charge, which is, uh, that's only really applicable if you're 200 miles out at sea. Uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, controlled by the Coast Guard, which obviously isn't something that I'm ever really in the situation of, but I did get a little bit of extra training with that, as well as it did come with professional level CPR and, um, you know, epinephrine, auto injector, that sort of stuff. But I also get the little EMT cert. And then uh, I also took the national registry test. So I'm now a national registry EMT. Uh, I have a patch on a jacket, which is in a couple of videos. If you see it, then that's what that's all about. Uh, and so uh, now that I went through the higher level of training, I thought that it was really good. Ah, uh, shoot. <laughs> There's a bee right here. It's uh, been bothering me for a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I've been checking out the training and uh, I really liked what it had to say and I think uh, it makes me a more valuable asset when I'm outside guiding especially on mountaineering and backcountry expeditions because that way you actually do know a little bit more about basic life support and uh, you can get into uh, more advanced care for your clients if you have that exact situation. Actually a little bit ago uh, last season I did help in an extraction uh, I won't name the guide company, mainly because I forget, uh, but it was an all-women's group, and there was some rock fall on uh, Mount Baker, that's where it was, and uh, I aided in getting the patient from the site of where she had her accident down to the highest camp, which was actually our camp, and then um, we went on with our day, and a helicopter actually showed up and extracted her and took her to Harborview. Uh, and that's all the information I have on the subject, but, um, I did get to aid in that rescue. And that was back when I was, uh, woofer and, uh, going back when I'm thinking about it with my EMT skills, there's a lot more help I could have given to her. So it is very nice to have, uh, something like an EMT training with you on these longer expeditions and even just the shorter ones. Anyway, that's my personal, uh, that's my personal experience with emergency medicine. I look forward to having more. Well, sort of not, but uh, I look forward to having stuff that turns out well. Uh, but now I want to just sort of talk about the different tiers of wilderness medicine training. I'm going to talk about four tiers, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how many days there are, uh, the cost, what certifications you get, and then what you learn during the course. And I'm going to try to be thorough with this. When I write down, um, when I have what you learn, and then I move on from, like, say, a WUFA to a Wilderness Advanced First Aid, you can just assume that everything in the WUFA is also covered in the the higher tiered classes. So, you know, everything in a WUFA class is also covered in an EMT class and so forth. Uh, but I'm going to keep on going in levels of, uh, levels of uh, scope of practice. And then I'm going to end in just about what most people have. So uh, first thing I'll talk about is WUFA, Wilderness First Aid. Uh, this is the lowest level medical course you can get for outdoor, uh, for anything outdoors. This is like if you're just out as a day hiker uh, or just out recreationally with your friends, climbing, hiking, skiing, whatever you want. You just want a little bit of medical know-how to handle certain situations coming uh, that could come at you. 
Uh, this is a two-day course, 16 hours. It costs anywhere from 245 to 275 or so. And then you get uh, the certifications are wilderness first aid and epinephrine auto injector. So if someone has an EpiPen with them, uh, you're trained on how to use that uh, for prescribed with the, within some limitations. Again, I'm not going to get into everything, but uh, that's what the class is for. So, uh, and then I have <clears throat> roughly what it teaches. Uh, patient assessment system, emergency plans, you know, spine, how to deal with certain spinal head, head injuries, shock, wilderness wound management, heat and cold injuries, altitude illness, chest and abdominal uh, pain, altered mental status, and anaphylaxis is all that I have listed. And uh, it's only a two-day course, so we're really not going to go too in-depth with all of those subjects. It's more just brushing over certain topics. And uh, I, I was talking to a dude who took this course a little bit ago, and I think my favorite line was, uh, he said that this course really teaches you how not to make the problem worse. <laughs> so, uh, so that's really what this is all about, is how to keep your patient somewhat comfortable and somewhat stable until you can get some form of higher medical training there, usually by way of search and rescue and you get EMTs on scene uh, while they transport out. So uh, really, it's just brushing over all this stuff. Uh, it does sow the seeds for more important items further down the line, like the patient assessment system. You'll find that in every single course, no matter what you do, there's going to be a patient assessment system. And while I don't know how in-depth they go, um, it's, it'll still help get the bases down uh, in order to move on if you're planning to move to a higher level of training. I should also mention that all of this curriculum, I'm pulling out of the Knowles curriculum because that is the wide, most widespread uh, organization in the USA for this type of training. But uh, they may change it just slightly uh, with including certain things or, you know, excluding certain things in addition, like for your specific area. And they may change up the curriculum a little bit. So this isn't exactly fully on par for someone who's in Florida versus someone who's in Washington. That's a, a possibility. So take my words with a grain of salt. All right, so the next form of training that you can get above the woofer is a WAFA. <laughs> I like to call it WAFA. I don't know if it's the actual name for it, but it stands for Wilderness Advanced First Aid. And this course is five days, 40 hours. So, you know, a little bit more than the two days. Uh, it costs anywhere from about 565 to $600. Uh, these prices also, by the way, are through Knowles. Um, I'm not sure. It may, you know, vary a little bit in your area, but 600 is probably about as much as it'll go. Uh, minimum age for both the woofer and the WAFA is 16 years old. And so uh, you don't need to be, you know, super uh, old for any of these courses. And the certifications you get are obviously the WAFA itself. And it does come with CPR, so you do get CPR training, which could last anywhere from a full day to half a day, something like that. But you do learn at least adult CPR. I don't know about child, but probably uh, at least adult CPR. So what does the WAFA teach? Uh, in addition to everything from the woofer, or sorry, the wilderness first aid, you also in, get introduced to a focused spinal assessment or some organizations call this a nexus test. Uh, you also get more advanced wilderness wound cleaning sort of deal and, uh, and you know, su uh, dealing with the wounds. You also get fractures, dislocations, athletic, athletic injury, submergent incidences, North American bites and stings, which is really nice. Lightning, obviously CPR, they may add in the AED on that, which uh, is a very nice skill that is usually paired with CPR a lot diabetes, urinary and reproductive injuries, some poisoning, uh, communicable disease, legal issues, medical legal issues when you can operate when you can't, which is also very nice. Uh, first aid kits, uh, they do touch on getting into first aid kits. Uh, and then this one actually does have an exam along with it. I believe it has a written exam as well as a practical exam. Uh, based on information that you learned in the class. It's not going to be like super rigorous, but uh, it is 
an extra level onto the certification whereas the wilderness first aid you just go and the way how you get the certification is you just show up both days here it's a five-day course that actually comes with some form of certification in the end where you have to actually prove that you understand and can apply the knowledge and skills that you learned over the course which does lend more credibility if you're planning on using this for uh let's say help to help you get a job and i should say that both the woofer or sorry i keep on saying woofer both the woofa and the wafa sorry i'm getting bugs all over the place both the WUFA and WAFA, they have voluntary research. Uh, so the the Wilderness First Aid is pretty much a research on its own. Like you just retake the course, but you can use the Wilderness First Aid to recertify your WAFA um, after I think it's two years or so. That's when it uh, when the certification expires. So now we're moving on from sort of the recreational to the uh, to the medical to the professional realm of medical training so after the wafa you get the woofer and this is the first medical certification that i started out with this is usually where you'll find uh mountain guides uh river guides uh you know any sort of guides outdoor exp professionals people that work with youth groups outside uh anyone who's getting paid to bring people outdoors they're pretty much going to have a woofer this is the industry standard more or less of what uh, just about any company requires a person to have or someone in the group to have. Uh, not everyone, if you have like three or four guides going on a some sort of trip, uh, generally in some places they all have to have some sort of medical certification. Maybe it's they all have to be woofers. Uh, but sometimes I've worked in some groups where just one person has to have medical certification and then the other two guides can be, uh, they're, they don't have to have either as high as a medical certification or they uh, just don't have to have one in general. So that depends on your company that you're working with. So you can ask them, get all the details on that. Depends on their protocols and, you know, anything of that nature. So, uh, but if you're going to be out independently working with clients for money, then pretty much have to have a woofer. So you can just expect to get that. And it's not like you have to have the Wilderness First Aid and the WAFAT before you get the woofer. You can just hop in. With any of these medical certifications I'm talking about, you don't really need to have any cert before joining the course. It, with the exception of maybe CPR for the EMT, some places require you to have that. But, um, but other places don't. So moving back to the Wilderness First Responder, the cost for this is anywhere from $800 to $1,200. It is a 10-day course, 80 hours. Uh, actually, most of them come with a rest day in the middle, like day six or something. So it's more of a nine-day course. But it takes over the place of 10 days. Uh, yes, that's, that is actually a lot. I think the one I did was like $750. Um, so it's probably more along the lines of no more than a thousand dollars but on the website on Noel's website they said up to twelve hundred dollars so that's why i included that but that's probably more on the steeper end especially i think i did mine through rei and i am a member with rei so uh i got like a fifty dollar discount or whatever you can find ways to get something less than twelve hundred dollars this is also a certification that people will travel for like in my woofer class uh, i had a couple people from montana that drove to Washington to take this class. So it's not uncommon to get people that uh, will travel for this course because of the level it's at. Uh, ski patrol, actually, that's what they were on and they were taking their woofer. So if you want to do ski patrol, woofer is not bad, uh, not bad cert to have. Minimum age is also 16 years old. And then the specific certifications that came with my woofer or the ones that Knowles provides are CPR, epinephrine, auto injector, and then you get the woofer cert as well. So uh, what do you teach? And this is also getting very much into the backcountry with your clients. Again, as a professional working in the backcountry with clients. So just keep that one in mind. Uh, so what does it teach? Lifting and moving, spinal protection and litter packing. So uh, keeping the spine stable for an extended period of time fracture management, leadership, communication, and team building that goes along with uh, B1 
being the outdoor professional in the group of people that aren't, uh, res uh, respiratory distress, you know, dealing with breathing problems, any sort of search and rescue and evacuation and dealing with plans as well as the SAR structure that they have in most places. Dental emergencies, very, very minute dental emergencies, like if you lose a tooth or if you have an impacted uh, wisdom tooth, something like that. Uh, communicable, uh, communicable disease as usual, more legal medical stuff. And this does very much have an exam, uh, a 100 question exam that I think you have to score 80% on. It's pass fail. So get at least 80% on as well as a practical where, uh, it's you and another person. I think all these, all the practicals involve two people because you're usually working with a partner. Uh, I can't speak for the WAFAC because I don't, I've never went through that, but the woofer and above, you get two people, which is you and your partner, and there's one person who generally leads the, uh, the test, and uh, you just have one of the instructors that has some sort of injury, and you're expected to go through, do, follow the entire pyramid structure, pyramid structure, may I'll do a video on that actually one day, um, but uh, you essentially go through all that and then sort of make up a plan. And then if you, if you hit on all the topics, if you make a, you know, a good enough plan, then they'll pass you. And if you're interested in more details on that, I can make another video involving that. But uh, that's the exam. I think uh, certification lasts two years, I want to say. And so you have two years while you're actually certified as a woofer. And then after the two-year marking, you have this one-year buffer period where you go through a research program uh, and then you become a woofer again. And if you wait till that third year is done, then you have to go through the entire course, the entire 10 day course again. As for the recertification, the woofer research, uh, that'll cost you about $300 or so. And it's a two or sometimes three day course. Uh, it's just a weekend. Uh, and, uh, I've never actually been through one because I reserted by getting a higher medical uh, cert. Uh, but uh, it's essentially it's everything they just teach you everything that you know, or sorry, everything that's different now because you know the medical world keeps on changing. And then they bring you through a bunch of scenarios. And if you go through a medical course, you're gonna have to get used to scenarios because there's a lot of them, and uh, that's usually how you learn best too. Uh, Another option for Knowles specifically is you can also take the Wilderness First Aid course to recertify your woofer or WAFA or even your EMT, uh, which again is that two-day course. Um, so it's kind of your option, whatever you're, you uh, can get to fastest. But that's the, that's the recertification that you have to do. And uh, you are expected to keep that current with whatever company that you're working with that requires it, obviously. So that's like baseline, any medical professional in the field is gonna have a woofer. The next step up is for people like park rangers, search and rescue operatives, um, people like me who wanna be more prepared medically out in the field, and uh, divers, actually a lot of scuba divers will get this certification. Um, I guess that's just how it works. But the EMT, uh, in this case I also have wilderness EMT, uh, I'll talk about EMT courses first because you can get these just about anywhere a lot of colleges will offer EMT classes and it'll be something like I want to say like four or five hours every Saturday Sunday for like 13 weeks um, This course is a 200 hour course. So you have to have 200 hours of some form of training uh, in class time and uh, Also, you have to do about 10 or so hours of uh, clinical rotations where you're just hanging out in the emergency care unit and uh, waiting for people to come in and you can watch the doctors and ER techs and you know the nurses all do their thing so there is a bit of extra stuff with that uh, if you there are other ways to get an EMT certification if you don't want to go the college route you can go the same route that I and many other people have gone on where you can take an EMT course now these are offered through Knowles I took my EMT course through RMI and they are structured very differently actually um, in fact, RMI called my course the REMT for remote EMT because it came with the MPIC, uh, the extra MPIC search. 
certification. Uh, I also talked about CPR. For the Knowles EMT, I'm, I'm pretty sure you have to have a CPR cert before taking this EMT course. And that's very common. It has to be a professional level CPR. So it talks about an infant child uh, adult CPR and includes the Heimlich maneuver probably for all of them. Uh, but that is a requirement for many EMT courses. So you just have to do research of that on your own. Uh, for my 20 day, 200 hour course, it was arranged over a month. It was actually more like 26 days. Monday through Friday, you get Saturday and Sunday off with the exception of one 10 hour bit on those weekends to do your clinicals. And you did that for four weeks. So it is a bit of a fire hose, but I think uh, I kind of like doing that course the most. And if you want to get your EMT as fast as possible, this is the way to go. Uh, the cost can be anywhere from $3,500 to $4,000. Uh, again, it's, you know what, that one varies all over the place. For, e, uh, for Knowles, it's about that much. My course was $3,600. And it did include housing and food for the entire course. So that was actually really nice. Uh, my woofer and any course below that, I don't think they'll ever really give you housing and food. Unless it's part of a really big extra course that's like 50 days and 10 days out of them are your woofer. But, um, but this one did come with housing and food, which was really nice. Uh, minimum age is 18 now, so you, you know, you got to be a bit older. And the certs that come with this, uh, if you take a specific WEMT course, then you get WEMT as well as the state EMT for whatever state you're in. Uh, CPR can be added, like I mentioned before. And obviously the epinephrine auto injector, that's just a given uh, because that takes like no time to teach. And it's like, why would you not know that? So, um, yeah, and then other, you know, uh, other organizations can include other things like the MPIC. Uh, like I had but um, again if you're not working out on a boat that's kind of not that important uh, if you are an EMT now and you want to become a WEMT that's actually really easy to do all you have to do is take a wilderness first aid class or a, or a WAFA or a woofer and then that W that little W in there transfers over to your EMT so even just a wilderness first aid class will make you a WEMT so that's actually really easy to do two-day course I would recommend taking at least the Wilderness Advanced course or the Woofer course because then you actually learn stuff about the Focus Spinal Assessment or Nexus test. And uh, if you don't know what that is and you're an EMT because it wasn't taught in your specific protocols or you got your certification a long time ago and um, you were still using backboards for just about everything, uh, that is a good thing to actually learn the protocols between, learn the indications and the contraindications in order to perform a focused spinal assessment in the backcountry because that can be the solve to all your problems uh, or at least uh, that can make a really complex and involved uh, patient extraction into a little less complex and involved patient extraction again depending on the in injury so yeah, having that knowledge would be nice but if it, it was if you already know it then no big deal all right, what you get into with EMT is all vital signs. Uh, and I say that because um, in my particular woofer class, we didn't learn anything about uh, blood oxygen saturation, which is already, that's one of the vitals that EMTs take all the time is your SpO2 level, uh, as well as, um, you know, dealing with that problem like oxygen administration. That's probably why they didn't teach us during the woofer is because then we'd have to get into oxygen administration. But I think some different places around here in their woofer course will actually teach oxygen administration. And so then they have to get into blood saturation and all that stuff. So um, I think that maybe, I, for the most part, I believe it's not included in woofer uh, guidelines for oxygen stuff but uh, it may be in a couple areas. In EMT, oxygen administration is a must, and that is a very big thing. You also learn more anatomy, various body systems and stuff. So if you're in high school or college, uh, taking an anatomy course wouldn't be bad just to help understand the systems of the body a little bit. It's really not that much though. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, we got uh, backboards and KEDs. Uh, which again, aren't really used too much, but securing a person to a backboard KDs, traction splints, scuba injuries, and learning more about scuba diving problems, diabetes, we go very big into diabetes, triage and mass casualty incidences, 
that's also a big one that uh, is in the world of EMS that you could help out with. Uh, pediatrics, geriatrics, um, not super in-depth, but we do talk a little bit about certain ailments that happen to children, as well as um, just uh, the same thing for older folks as well. And uh, as I wrote down here, O2 administration. You learn O2 administration through nasal cannulas, non-rebreathers, bag valve masks, and uh, how to keep a patient supported uh, when they need assisted breathing uh, with oxygen tanks and everything. In addition with, uh, you know, learning all these skills, you also learn everything else. But, you know, a host of other things that I didn't think to write down. Um, stuff like uh, dealing with uh, car... Uh, injuries <laughs> injuries caused by vehicle collision they really talk about how you deal with the front country thing you do learn some uh some uh medication pharmace pharmaceuticals you know like uh, administering aspirin how to deal with nitroglycerin and that sort of stuff not too much if you want to get more into medications and ivs and uh more complex airways, then you have to go into the AEMT level. And then if you want to learn, you know, surgical airway options, then you have to become a paramedic. So that would be the next two steps above that. And with paramedics, you get, you know, like 70 different medications and uh, various other uh, ALS procedures. Whereas our airway, you do learn airway adjuncts in EMT, like OPAs and MPAs. If you don't know what those are, then take a class and learn about them. I'm, <laughs> it's not my job to teach you these things. And uh, I'm worried that some of you may get a little bit of a swelled head if I just go down the line with teaching different medical, uh, various medical procedures. But um, OPAs, MPAs, they really help you out with keeping the patient, you know, airway and a patent airway. And um, really just by taking these courses you do show your potential employers the level of seriousness you do take with uh, client care in the backcountry you know it may not be too often that you run into medical problems but by knowing how to deal with those medical problems especially very severe ones you show that you're a lot more involved in uh, your own training and your own uh, professional development as well as you uh, prepare yourself for things that you can happen out there you know if you're if you're working with people that aren't that experienced in the backcountry for a while, you're going to come across a medical emergency here and there. And knowing how to deal with that is, um, is very valuable and can save your lives and can make sure that you still have a good tip at the end of the trip. So uh, I may, uh, I've been screwing around a lot with my medical equipment that I carry around with me. I'm planning on making another video with my medical kit that I use for rock guiding or mountaineering guiding, uh, which I'll probably do in a little bit. I'm still working on sort of finding the things I want to carry, you know, building the kit together and um, deciding if I want to bring some things versus not bringing others. So I, I plan to make a video on that in the future. And then um, if anyone else wants to see any other medical videos for like uh, maybe help with their own exam, uh, I would be happy to make something like a full patient assessment video or like uh, how to a hypo wrap for uh, for a person. Uh, if you guys are interested in seeing any of that, I'd be happy to make them. I actually really am a bit of a geek when it comes to medical uh, situations and procedures. So, um, well, obviously, because I just took that EMT class for no reason. But um, I would love to help you guys out with any questions you have, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.